I've got a question for you, Damien. Congratulations. Uh, the current talk around the uh, internet is that you outfitched John Fitch. I'm just curious if uh, how you feel about that, and you know, if, if what your strategy was going into it, and how you felt it played out tonight. Okay. Uh, the strategy was to do what I did, you know, go uh, and try to, to take him down, take his back. Uh, unfortunately, I was not able to submit him because he's very tough to submit. I just realized when I got inside the cage and I got his back, I said, okay, now, you know, let's try like I did my last, last, last fights, but just didn't work, yeah. Uh, but the strategy, the, the, the A plan was that we had a B plan, and A plan. The A plan, you know, is was what I did. So I'm very happy because I won one of the toughest guys in the division. I, I don't. Rem I just remember him losing for GSP and to Johnny Hendricks, and I was able to control him. Of course, I always like to submit. Uh, I I train a lot more jujitsu nowadays to submit the fights and give a, a good fight for the fans. But sometimes it's just impossible. Is there any sense of you wishing you had dropped to 170 earlier in your career? Yeah, I think that sometimes, but you know, you cannot go come back, uh, go back to the past. So I just think I have. <laughs> and lastly, Dana, for you, just if you could comment on your strike force fighters tonight, they did very well. Yeah, I, I actually had. You know, I've been saying this a lot over the last couple of weeks. You know, uh, without getting into it, uh, you know, I, I felt bad about what's happened to those guys over there in the last year. Nothing I could do. Um, you know, they hung in there and they came in tonight and delivered and it was fun tonight. As those guys kept coming out from the prelims, I kept having guys come over to, to my room after the, after the prelims and it was just, the prelims were awesome tonight. These, these guys came in from Strike Force and they, and they really did a great job tonight. I'm happy for them. Life is going to be a lot different for these guys now. Yeah, and I was wondering how close you were to giving Tyron the knockout of the night bonus. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, um, the, uh, yeah, Bigfoot fucked him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> somebody give the mic to, to, to Lance Pugmire up here. Thanks. Just real quick, Dana, would you say that Antonio is the favorite to get the fight against Kane? And Antonio, from your perspective, uh, would it be a better fight this time around against Kane? Yeah, like I said, right here, right now, I don't like to make fights or, or say what I'm going to do next, but. Um, I wouldn't be opposed to, to, to giving him the fight. He went in there and, and he knocked, I, they called that a TKO. That was a knockout. He knocked out Alistar Overeem and uh, he looked great doing it. So we'll see what happens. Dana, uh, oh wait, let him, he had a question too. Man, I don't know. Now I'll be back to my home. Uh, stay with my family. No, in two weeks I'll be back to train. And uh, I just want to fight the best. And uh, the best heavyweights are here in the UFC. If uh, Turner, Joe Silva, UFC want to give another opportunity to fight Ken Velasco, it will be a pleasure. He's a big champion. He's a tough guy. He's a very great guy. And uh, I just want to fight the best guys. And uh, I want to fight who UFC want and who better for, for the show for UFC. Dana, despite the fact that you don't like making matches right now, I mean, there were some meaningful fights tonight. Uh, Rashad Evans losing. Does, does that open the door? Is Chris Weidman the only guy left now? I would have to say yes. I mean, I, I liked going into this fight anyway. We wanted to wait. We wanted to see what happens. And, you know, I liked Weidman for this fight anyway. Um, so, yeah. And Rashad looked worse than I've ever seen him tonight. He looked terrible. Have you talked to Anderson about that at all as camp? I know, you know Ed's in town. Have you, have you approached them about that fight yet? Or? No, you know, it's always a process in, in dealing with Anderson and getting him in his next fight. I don't mean that in a negative way. It's just I'm used to it. I know I know how this all goes. He's, everybody thinks that he's talking. I don't know why he does this. He makes it look like he doesn't want to fight Weidman. Believe me right here, right now, when I tell you, Anderson Silva does not care who he fights. Whoever we end up coming up with him to fight, he will fight. There's, there's never been a situation where I've been with Anderson Silva where he's said, there's, I will absolutely not fight this guy. So, yeah, the answer, my long-winded answer to your question is yes. And, and one other, a lot of talk right now is Joseph Benavides, you know, been at the top recently, but with his performance right now, could he be in line for a title shot again? Is it, is it too soon? What do you I think? don't know. We'll, we'll see. We'll see what he wants to do.
And for Tyron, if I could please, Tyron, uh, obviously uh, an incredible debut for you this evening. Can you talk about the feeling of, of going out and doing what you did tonight? Um, it just felt really good to make a statement. You know, uh, the gifts has been in there the whole time. You know, and a lot of people don't realize at the beginning of my career, I finished everybody. So for me, it's it's a new new leaf turned over. It's a new organization, and uh, I wanted to send a message to all the ones who went through on here. If I could quickly, now that uh, now that the champ is here, obviously congratulations to Jose. Uh, can, you, can you talk about his game plan coming in? It seemed like the leg kicks weren't part of the plan to start with. Then he went to it. Then he went away from it. What was the game plan, and how did it play out versus expectations? É, ele perguntou qual foi a estratégia se era para não usar tantos chutes, se essa foi a estratégia mesmo da luta que você fez. Então era assim, a gente tinha que chutar para minar a perna dele, para justamente ele parar de se movimentar, né? Então eu fui chutando ali com, com o passar do tempo, mas uma hora a gente percebeu que ele estava esperando o chute para botar para baixo. Então eu administrei mais na, na parte da mão mesmo, no box. Yeah, the plan was to kick him and, and keep him from moving a little bit, but I, I started to see that he was checking my kicks and he was maybe going for the takedown once I kicked, so I used my hands a little bit more. Diana, uh, I want to ask you, uh, what are your thoughts about the uh, little Nod fight against uh, Rashad and where this uh, win puts him in the division right now? It was a big win for him, beating Rashad Evans. You know, it's, it's a big win. Rashad Evans has lost to Machida and Jones. That's it. And, and Little Nog went in there one tonight, and uh, it puts him in a very good position. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, the question was if he believed this fight was going to be as difficult, and there's a lot of people saying in the fourth and fifth round it would get more difficult for Jose, and he said, yeah, um, you know, Frankie was a great champion. Uh, he was ready to go and fight eight or ten rounds if needed, but he knew Frankie was a great champion coming into this fight. He had a lot of time to train, and he was very happy when uh, he got the chance to fight him. E você está pensando agora em subir de divisão ou tem alguma resposta para vocês? Então, agora não, 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 é, não é comigo, acho que, que é o Tio Silva, né? se eles quiserem. Quem está achando que eu assim, eu aceito sim, eu acho que eu estou disposto a lutar com os melhores. Eu treino, eu respeito a todos, mas eu estou muito feliz de estar ali dentro, então quem eles colocarem para mim, eu vou aceitar o maior prazer. The question was if he's thinking of moving up in weight class. He said that's up to Dana and uh, Joe Silva. He's willing to fight anyone. He trains to fight anyone, so whoever they put in front of him. Uh, you know, we'll see what happens. Something interesting happened about 10 minutes ago. Somebody texted me and said, I want to fight him really bad. And so I got to talk to them and see, uh, talk to him and talk to them and see what happens. Wouldn't you like to know? Yeah. <laughs> It'd be very interesting. Anthony, Anthony Pettis said, I want to move to 145 and fight Jose Aldo. He just texted me 10 minutes ago. No, he goes down. He'll meet him at 145. So we'll see what happens. I, I have, um, my question is for both Bigfoot and Lil Nam. Um, both of you guys during this week were kind of, uh, there was a lot of talk about uh, your opponents getting fights after they beat you guys. Uh, can you talk about that situation and did that motivate you even more uh, tonight? Muita gente estava falando durante a semana de das lutas que os seus adversários teriam depois de vencer essas lutas. O que, que vocês acham disso agora? So, uh, I think that motivate that thing motivated me a lot because I, I know before he fight against Anso Silva I had a big fight against you know, so I did prepare a lot. Uh, my wrestling skills, my my box. I know I was very prepared to, to make this. Many people uh, don't believe in my job, and uh, but I believe me, no, and uh, I just I don't respect me so much, and. Uh, I worked too hard my striking for this fight. If uh, Katel Kubis is uh, the best coach uh, striking from Brazil, and uh, I show for the world the guys are wrong about me, and uh, I show specific to Overeem, and uh, I show how he gonna respect the, the other fighter. And, and Bigfoot, can you put this fight in perspective for you? Uh, for your career, you've had another big fight 
uh, in the past that was uh, a high profile fight, a big win for you against uh, uh, Fedor. And can you put this fight, this win, considering the lack of respect you received, and can you put it uh, in perspective as far as your career is? Bota essa luta em perspectiva na tua carreira. Você teve uma outra grande luta que foi com o Fedor e agora essa luta você disse que as pessoas não respeitavam. Bota essa. Diz como é que era essa luta na tua carreira. Yeah, these fights are very important to my professional life. You know, the first fight with o Fedor, many people uh, don't believe in my job. And now the same thing. I like this situation. I like the underdog, you know, because I'm trying to two months and uh, many people uh, think that I was in my home uh, drink soda, watch movie and, and eat popcorn but no man, I'm trained hard, I'm trained Saturday, Sunday, you know, I'm trained uh, Christmas, New, uh, New Year and uh, I'm, I give my blood for this fight and uh, I give up for other fights too. I have a question for Bigfoot. Bigfoot, now that your fight with Overeem is over, uh, are you gonna are you planning on returning back to the Black Pavilions? No, I train in the best teams in the world. You no, know, the Chino Guerra in Rio de Janeiro, with uh, Rogério, Rodrigo, Feijão. You know, and uh, when I'm here in the USA, I train in the America Top Team, the best team of the Florida. And uh, I have a good camp all the time, and uh, I don't have. A, I don't want to go to Black Zilla. Black Zilla is just business, you know. And uh, I don't have love with the guys. And uh, I wanna train when I uh, have a lot of friends, true friends. And uh, in HT in Chinogera, I have a true friends. Another question for Damien. Damon, uh, are you willing to right are you willing to disclose what your plan B was for Fitch if plan A didn't work? Uh, yeah, the, let's see. I wasn't able to to grapple with him. You know, of course, it was to strike. But there are some specific things that we are we are doing the striking games in the striking game that I was training specifically for for him. Joe, just a couple quick ones for you. Um, pretty satisfied with the win. What, what were your thoughts on the fight? Yeah, I'm happy with it. You know, anytime you go out and be, you know, a tough guy, a top contender like Ian McCall, I mean, you got to be happy. You know, I went out there. I really actually started feeling uh, a lot better than third. And, and when the fight ended, I was like, dang, you know, this is a fun fight. It's a great opponent. And, uh, Wish we could go a few more. So I was really starting to chill in the third, and uh, yeah, I had fun out there. It was good to it was good to be back in there. I, I felt super composed, and you know, I'm tough with the win. I mean, <laughs> I went out there and hit him with all I had, and, and you know, gave him all I had, and he took it. So you know, it was nice, and you know, it's always great to go out there and get the knockout. I know I rocked him early, but you know, I grow more as a fighter. You know, going those second rounds and the and the, and the third rounds, and uh, and I get better, and that's that's what I'm trying to do. So uh, you know, it was perfect, man. I'm happy with the way things went. You said before the fight that you were actually leaning uh, towards wanting a couple of fights and then towards your next title shot. Now that the fight is over, you know how to win, you got the win. Do you still feel that way, or would you like to kind of make a case for a title shot right now? Well, I'm not going to beg for a title shot. I'm not going to ask for one, and I wouldn't mind, of course, like I just said, you know, just improving. You know, Mighty Mouse uh, went out there last time and beat me. He's beat everyone in the division, the top three guys. So, you know, I'd just like to get better, but, you know, give me a title shot, and I'm going to do everything in my power to go in there and take that as well. So, I mean, either way is good for me, but like I said, I'm, uh, I'm continuing to improve uh, in, in the fight. This three round, you know, fight with such a tough guy like Uncle Creepy was, uh, was awesome for me. Uh, Dana, back here. Just uh, give us uh, your thoughts on, on Josie Aldo now that he's defeated Frankie uh, on record. How does he match up or in terms of the pound for pound list? Because we always talk about Frankie Edgar and right. guys up there. No, I agree. He's one of the best pound for pound. I mean, uh, again, off the top of my head, the list, I mean, he's up there. He's, he's one of the top guys in the world. Uh, I, I call this a super fight between two of the pound for pound best in the world in their prime. And Jose Aldo won the fight. It's, he, uh, he is definitely one of the you know, top four or five best pound for pound fighters in the world. Uh, question for Frankie, obviously. Uh, Frankie, I did search online, talk to everybody in this room. People are weary back and forth as to who won the fight. You tell me your thoughts on how that fight went down and what's going on. What's going through your mind right now? 
Uh, you know, Jose is a champion. That's pretty much the bottom line. You know, I don't want to be talking about, do you think you won this and that, scored the rounds, it doesn't matter. He, he left the belt and he's a champion. He deserves it. Uh, Dana, uh, regarding that, Dana, I know that the welterweight division, you know, a lot of key fights are happening next month in Montreal. All right. But Is this where do you think that he stands right now after this win? Because, I mean, you know, he dominated a guy who no one's really dominated like that before. Yep. Uh, <clears throat> again, like I was talking about Rashad Evans, if you look at Fitch, let me think off the top of my head, George St. Pierre and, uh, and Hendricks, yeah. you know? So, yeah, it's a good win for, you know, for. for for Fitch, it's, it's, he's lost two of his last three, but he's a tough guy. And the perfect way to describe this fight was he outfitched Fitch. It's exactly, I mean, I said the same thing, and that's what everybody else was saying. And after this tournament happens up in Montreal, you know, he will fall right in there somewhere with one of these guys. And we'll do a fight. I see him becoming a number one contender pretty quick. <clears throat> and for Frankie, I mean, do you. When, when you look at this fight, I mean, is there anything that you came out of the fight as far as um, surprises or with, 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 with Jose or um, was it what you expected? Yeah, you know, uh, I felt that was uh, prepared in all areas, you know. Um, he's, he's one of the top pound pounds, I heard what Dan just said, and uh, yeah, I mean, he brought everything. Oh, Frankie, now that it's over and you had the fight at 145, do you feel better as a featherweight or do you like how you feel as a fighter fighting at lightweight? Uh, the fight kind of keeps, keeps on going the same way wherever I'm at, you know. Um, get a little beat up and end with these close fights, so uh, I don't know if it matters, to be honest with you. As far as your skills out there, I mean, yeah, I, mean, I, feel like I, I match up well with guys at 55 and, 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 and at 45, you know. Do you think you'll stick around at 145 now? Yeah, I don't know what I'm doing, man, to be honest with you. It's just too soon. Thanks. Frankie, uh, and how did you change the flow of the fight there where he was really kind of taking you apart with the leg, the legs early, and then you seemed to take that away from him? What was the key to taking that away? I just think I turned the pace up. You know, I tried to, to back him up as much as I can and just, uh, uh, you know, push the pace. It's always a tough thing, uh, to, you know, to like look back on it. But you, you've always been a slow starter in these fights. You know, here you had the momentum going three, four, five. Is there, any, you know, what do you think about about those slow starts? And you know, I know you, I'm sure you've talked about it in practice. You know, what do you do to get yourself in the fights earlier? Yeah, I don't know. I guess this is something we're gonna have to figure out soon. Friday. What's up, man? Hey, uh, you started. This is your first fight at featherweight, and I want to know how did you feel in the early rounds, and did you feel, uh, did you have to, was your body adjusting as you went along, or were you comfortable from the very beginning? I felt like I do a 55, you know, I didn't feel any different. Everything was the same to me as, as far as that goes. Did you, was there anything different about being at featherweight as opposed to being at lightweight, being that you had to cut the weight? Uh, I mean, no, not really, you know. Um, maybe, maybe uh, I didn't get backed up as much with the, the bigger punches. I, I, you know, I, I really didn't see the fight, so. Mark Scola with the uh, MMA Nets. First question for uh, Bigfoot. Did you get a chance to speak to Orim after the fight? And if so, was it more respectful? It's a follow up on the question I lost the information. Yes, after knockout. He's my friend now. <laughs> <laughs> Giselle, it looks like you still want to fight up there moving. Um, Dana just mentioned uh, Showtime Pettis. Is that a fight that you look forward to? Você está se mexendo aí, parece que vai ter luta. O Dana falou do Anthony Pettis, é uma luta de interesse. Ah, depende do Dana. Eu acho que isso, para mim, eu já falei, eu respeito todos, eu treino para lutar com os melhores. Se ele colocar, não posso fazer nada. Sou funcionário, eu conheço o patrão. Acho que seria uma luta boa, mas eu acho que. Para mim chegar no Pérez, eu acho que eu tenho que caminhar fazendo um longo caminho, eu acho que já está batendo na porta do cinturão, então eu respeito, mas se eles colocaram, eu, eu tenho que lutar. Yeah, like I said, it's up to Dana, but I mean, uh, that is an interesting fight. I train to fight the best, I respect them all. I think to fight uh, Pérez, he's almost there at the title shot in his own division, but it will be an interesting fight. And also for Tyron Woodley, that was a big statement tonight. Um, coming in from Showtime, that's one of the best former champ. Is there anyone out there that you want next? 
Uh, it's a ton of guys. Yeah, I fought on March 16th, so I'll be sitting there waiting. Uh, you know, I was only in there for 30 some seconds today, so I'm so fresh. I'll continue training. And, you know, God forbid, you know, I never wish any um, injury upon anyone, but uh, March 16th, uh, my passport is valid, so if someone falls out, I want in. Last of the Dana. Um, today, Ethan Belfort said he wants John Jones yeah, again. Uh, what's your comment on that? <laughs> um, uh, I'm not making any fights. Then. I have a question for Dana. Um, I'd like to know if you consider a JDS over in fight right now. Um, I just said I'm not making any fights. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I think I think that you know <clears throat> we were just talking about who's next for uh, for Kane Velasquez. That that's a tougher question than than uh, you know who's next. Now. There's a lot of interesting fights to make in the heavyweight division. Uh, who fights Kane next is the toughest. That's why I say when I tell you guys I don't make fights. I definitely don't when a guy just comes out. But I wouldn't be opposed to giving him the fight after what he just did. And uh, you know, question was asked of him earlier. I mean, this guy has beat some tough guys. Então, eu sei. Tem uma, uma pergunta em português para o é, traduzir. É, Aldo, eu queria saber se na sua opinião a luta também foi tão parelha, tão disputada assim como você acha, como você avaliou, quais rounds você acha que você realmente ganhou? Então, para mim a luta sempre foi parelha pelo fato de eu não conseguir o um nocaute, né? Então o Frank estava vindo para cima, mas para mim, eu, eu, se eu perdi, eu perdi um minuto do quarto round. Então, eu acho que ganhei todos os rounds. Eu, Fui muito mais contundente do que ele, então eu conectei muito mais golpes, chutes e defendi bem a, a entrada de perna dele. The question was uh, with all the talks about being in such a close fight, what did Aldo, how did he rate the rounds? And he said that he feels he won every round except maybe one minute of the fourth round. Uh, he connected a lot more punches, a lot more strikes, he defended the takedowns. Frankie was always coming forward, but he feels that he won the rounds. We'll take a couple more questions. Ela tem moré que não combate, me pergunta, eu quero em português, to Aldo. É, Aldo, você pode dizer que o Edgar foi o oponente mais duro que você já enfrentou? Acho que toda luta para mim sempre vai ser dura, né? Eu respeito todo mundo, mas um cara que eu, que eu tiro o chapéu, que, que eu sei que se for lutar um dia com ele de novo, é cinco rounds que é o Febe. O Febe já lutou com as duas mãos quebradas e assim mesmo foi para cima do todo. Então para mim essa luta, para mim, ficou marcada ser a mais dura hoje. O Frank é um, foi o campeão do peso leve, então ele tem o seu valor. Mas para mim, o Ryan Faber é o mais duro que eu já enfrentei. A pergunta foi: é o Frank o mais duro que você enfrentou? E Aldo disse que ele respeita todos os seus oponentes. E ele foi muito duro, mas o mais duro hoje foi o Uriah, que é um cara que lutou com as mãos quebradas e é um cara que ele enfrentou de novo. Ele acha que ele vai ser um grande lutador. Então, sim, Uriah é o mais duro. Vamos fazer uma pergunta mais rápida. Vamos fazer uma pergunta mais rápida. If anybody has one more question. No? Thank you very much. Have a great night. Appreciate it.